All right, y'all. What's up? It's the homie Koru. What it do? Back with another video here for ya. Last video, super kind of crazy intro to magic in general. Um, the universe is mind. The universe is metaphysical. Manifests into the physical. And in this video, I wanted to basically kind of like go over like how it ties in more specifically to belief and to your belief systems and belief is probably the most powerful tool that we have um because it's i would say it's very likely that you haven't thought about why you believe what you believe and maybe take a minute maybe even pause this video why do you believe what you believe why do you believe anything from science? Why do you believe anything religiously? Why do you believe anything about the world? Do you have any general beliefs about the way that the world works? Um, and why? Why do you have those? Is it because maybe you grew up with them? Maybe they were told to you? Is it because maybe they told you something else and you kept looking into the world and you kept seeing this thing and you started to form a belief around these things that you've seen in the world? Um, and I think that it's important to think about what you believe, but I think it's important to pick what you believe. And I think that you can pick what you believe. I think most people don't think about a belief as something that you could pick and choose from. Like I choose to believe in this. And I think that that's exactly what you should do because, um, a lot of times with uh, spells and magic and all that, you, you know, the general way that it's always presented is you do one spell, then you wait for that one thing to manifest. And yes, that is how spells work. Um, that is how magic works because you're impressing upon your subconscious. But your beliefs are what your day to day is. And like 95% or something like that of your life is your subconscious mind, which is where all of your beliefs are stored. And so by picking your beliefs and going through them and choosing what you want to believe, you're basically choosing what to manifest in your life. And so of course, if people are skeptical about, um, you know, what you think is what happens to you how about magic in general um i kind of wanted to cover that real quick because some people will go like super far with some people are aren't skeptical they're super far into believe in tons and tons of crazy stuff or whatever um and i did want to find find kind of a like middle line and that means you shouldn't necessarily believe in just anything. And you could say, of course, like one plus one is three, right? Well, I believe one plus one is three. Well, I think anyone who's like barely conscious could prove that to you that that's not the case very, very easily, right? And so there is this middle ground between choosing what you believe in and knowing what the facts are about our physical world that we live in. And there are these fundamental facts that create the basis for our reality where it would basically be useless to try to change them. And so this is because of Saturn in the planetary system and planetary magic or Bana, the third Sephiroth in um, the Kabbalistic system put pins in either of those if you know you know but basically in the planetary system of magic each of the seven planets represents this universal energy and each of the seven planets have jobs saturn's job is to create limits and boundaries and limitations and so these limits and these limitations are what give us consensual reality and so if we didn't have rules and regulations, nothing would behave according to any type of law, right? Atoms would be doing whatever they want, whenever they want, everything, would there even be a reality? Everything would, there wouldn't be any consensus, any continuity. And so, you know, there would just, would there even be anything? Would, would there be nothing? We don't know because we live in a universe with rules and with laws. And this is what creates our consensual reality. So there are certain limitations. So I would say that I basically do believe that anything is possible, but 
the reason that we have rules and laws and limitations are to create a consensual reality. And what use would it be if you spent all of your energy trying to simply break the laws of physics? Like, congrats, bro. You're not, you're not absorbing what the meaning of life actually is at that point, right? So all of that to say that there is a very happy medium. There is a middle pillar. There is a middle ground to choosing what you believe about life. And so our thoughts create reality. What is a belief? And so basically a belief would just be a collection of thoughts that have been imprinted upon your subconscious mind and that that becomes a program and it loops in your mind basically. And so um, basically I would, I would try to challenge you to say what types of beliefs do you have about other people? What types of beliefs do you have about money? What types of beliefs do you have about yourself? What types do you of beliefs do you have about the world at large? And these types of beliefs are what lay the foundation for the things that you manifest in your life. Thoughts create reality. Beliefs create reality. And so I would um, encourage you to list out your beliefs. Get a pen and paper. Actually do it. Actually write them down. I, you know, write down the types of things that you believe in, in some of those categories I just mentioned. I believe only evil people make money, right? Some people believe that you have to be evil or manipulative in order to make a lot of money, right? Um, I believe that, you know, only people from this religion act this particular way. Like what, what do you actually believe about the way that the world works? I believe I'm too poor to ever whatever, who, who knows? Just try and start get self-reflective for a minute and start writing some of these beliefs about our lives and about people and about ourselves and our day-to-day -day lives that you actually believe in. And take a minute to really soak it up and try to just honestly write down like what you genuinely think you believe about life. And so basically, oh, I wrote a couple other here. Do you believe being poor is virtuous? Some people think it's virtuous if you don't have any money. Um, do you believe that you're worthy of love? Do you believe the world is going to shit? A lot of people right now, 2024, would really write that one down first, maybe. Um, and so next to each of these beliefs, once you have those written down, I would write out the implications of those beliefs. If you, we are to, let's say for a minute, just for a fact, that your beliefs create your reality, right? Well, go next to each of those beliefs and write in basically the end result of believing that. Do you believe being poor is virtuous? The end result would be, I am virtuous and poor. Do you believe that you're not worthy of love? Okay, well... I won't ever find love. That's the go through each one and write down if this is true, if this were true in my life, what would be the end result of what would manifest in my life if our beliefs create reality? And so I think that what you could do after that is take that, put it to the side, and then go ahead and write out what you wish you want it to believe like maybe you've had something like well i want to believe that i'm worthy of love or i want to believe that i can be a good person and make lots of money or i want to believe that the world is um gonna be okay you know like everything that you've ever dared to believe that you haven't actually believed go ahead and write it out and be bold and write down like if what were all the things that i wish i could have that i want and then write down if that happened next to that belief what would manifest if beliefs create reality? I think you'll find that it's pretty pretty impressive the difference between our imagination of what we think would be a really, really great reality to have manifested and what we actually believe about the world right now. And so I think that it's, it's really illustrative of where your head's at. And I just really kind of wanted to like bring this out and bring these belief systems out and think about 
what what if I were bold and believed in something better? And so one of the things about belief and one of the things about creating these types of beliefs is that you can't look at what the world is just showing you right now and take that and run with that and think, I've seen this every day in my life. This is just how this is. Because trust me, that's not the case. It's it's just simply not. You're just reinforcing this belief that you've already started manifesting because you already had the subconscious belief, if that makes sense. And so I, I really would encourage you to try to explore your beliefs. And the thing with beliefs is they're over time. That's what's so powerful about them is that it's not a one-time thing. This is if your mind creates reality, if your thoughts create reality, your beliefs are the programming system that your reality, that you're manifesting yourself is running on. And so basically that kind of brings us all into the title of this video, which if you've noticed that uh, I haven't mentioned yet, um, which is, do you believe in love? And so in order to kind of illustrate where this whole philosophy is. Um, I have this story that I like to tell where um, basically it's about two men and the first man does not believe in love. The second man does believe in love. And so the first man goes about his life. He grows up and you know, he's got all these different types of beliefs. You know, he's a little more into like science and evolution and he doesn't think like there's this some ethereal thing called love out there, right? It's like he thinks, you know, we have chemical reactions in our brain and our body hormones, you know, it's just how this is. Like, it's just like something that tricks us, you know, we got to reproduce, blah, 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 right? So this man goes out and, you know, he might call what he's feeling love, but he knows better, right? And so he ends up getting married to this woman and he, they, they're good for a minute. They have a kid and then after a while they start arguing things don't work out and he's like well you know i mean we tried our best but that's uh, the love's gone I, I can't do this anymore it's just not working and we got to keep moving on right he doesn't believe that there's this real thing called love he thinks that the whole connection is just gone it doesn't even make sense anymore they they don't they don't get along and they can't stand each other it's just better if they weren't together right so he goes for a while, he's single again, he's trying to take care of his kid and, you know, he ends up getting married and divorced like one more time throughout his life and he goes to his deathbed and on his deathbed he's kind of like, yeah, you know, like this was a ride, you know, it didn't have a bad life, but he didn't believe in love and he's like, well, you know, that's just life, that's it, that's how it goes and he dies alone and man number two, of course, believes in love and so... Growing up, he totally believed in love. He didn't know how anyone could ever not believe in love. And he gets older and uh, he finds someone else who believes in love, surprisingly, as much as he does. And so they get married and they start to build a family. And then, of course, things get rough, but they know that love's going to get them through it. And they do love each other and they keep reminding themselves of that. And the arguments eventually get resolved. They find a way to work through all their problems. Raising kids is so crazy and so difficult, but they end up getting through it and they end up dying together and they're buried next to each other in the cemetery and, you know, on their on their tombstones, it says they really did love each other, you know, and I think that these two stories um, really kind of epitomize like kind of where I'm trying to really get at everything with this. And at the end, it's like, is love real? I don't know. I don't know if there's a actual love thing that's real. Personally, I'd say yes, but does it matter? Or does believing in love matter? Does believing that this thing is real and that it will hold you together have more an impact on your life than if you believe that people are vicious and they'll turn on you? You know what I mean? So I love this story. I love telling this story. It's definitely something to think about and to try to process. And, um, you know, in my in my coming out video, I mentioned how I grew up Christian. So I'm going to pre-warn everyone here. I think the Bible is an excellent book for magic, actually. I think 
people have kind of hijacked it. There's a lot of really great information in there if you know how to read the Bible. And um, there's a verse in there that says, God calls things that are unseen as though they were seen, and the unseen becomes seen. And I think that this is a great representation of your your beliefs, your system. You're calling what you are trying to manifest into the world, which you are manifesting into the world, and you're going to see it once you put that into your belief system and once you have that repetition and, and create that habit of thought. And so that's kind of where I'm going to end this one. Um, and I think belief is really important. And again, just like the last video, I would say do not simply believe me. Really think about it. Really test it. Really try to understand what you believe and why and maybe try to consider what that would imply in your life. Um, and so if you made it this far, super grateful. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening to me. Feel free to, of course, subscribe and like and do all the cool YouTube stuff. Um, if you did appreciate the video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.